what's up guys and welcome to episode number five of our Minnesota Wild Gym mode. So in last episode we had the off season completely um, and yeah our team looks a lot better. We did sign a couple players in free agency including Dimitri Jaskin and then we signed Kulak who's a depth guy on our team. And goaltending wise we also signed Michael Hutchinson for our backup behind Devin Dubnik. So our team is looking a bit different than last year but better. Also, Lou Kunin is up to an 82, and we have him playing on the wing this year, um, just because I don't know. I think he would be better suited on the wing, maybe, because he's a sniper. I know in real life, he is also a, um, he plays both positions. He plays center and wing, so that's why I have him there as well. Another cool thing is our AHL team has some cool prospects in it now, so Lundestrom, who we drafted um, just this off season, if I could actually click on him, I can't right now for some reason. I think it's a glitch. Um, so basically at 10th overall, we drafted this guy. He looks pretty good all around, actually. 61 overall, 18 years of age. He's going to be our third line center in the minors. We also have Mason Shaw in there, who's a bottom six potential. Sokolov, who's a low top nine. And Salaturo, who's a high HL top six forward. So our HL team looks pretty strong for the most part. Greenway also grew. And we do have Kaprizov in the NHL this year. I was debating not bringing him up, but the thing is, once again, I can't click on him. <laughs> Stupid glitch. Um, so Kaprizov is listed as a fourth line forward. And look at the defensive stats. They're not that bad. So he's going to be playing fourth line for now. But I think that's all I have him on for lines. So he's not going to get any power play time. So he's not going to probably score much in his rookie season. Um, but you never know. He and Eric Zanek might be a good fourth line combo. I also have Erickson Eck on the penalty kill this year because look at that defensive awareness. I didn't expect that. 92. And he's got some okay stick checking and shot blocking, but he's just a good defense. He's got good awareness, let's say. So he's our fourth line center. Coyle's our third line center, which might be a bit of a problem, but he is on the power play, so I'm hoping that helps him out. And we also have Koivu, who's just on the penalty kill this year, not on the power play, because I wanted to put Kunin in there because I want Kunin to get some really good growth. Um, and yeah, so that's our four core defensively. We have a pretty solid defense. Um, like I said, cool extra depth guy. And then there's our goaltending. So I'm not going to waste any more time. And we are going to get soon into the simulation. Actually, I want to show you guys quickly the draft class for 2019. So you guys could already see who we might be able to go after in during next off season, just to give you guys more time to think about who we could go after. So here is the players that are available. So Marty Subban, medium elite. Uh, Glenn Cohane, medium elite. Those guys, all medium elite kind of players. So there could be some good players available. Just going to go through till the end of the second round potential players. Just go really quick through them all. There you go. So I don't know what we want to go after in regards to the draft season. I also might as well show you guys the trading block already for next episode because next episode is already going to be the trade deadline because we're going to sim all the way up to there in this episode. The trade block should stay the same pretty much, but it might change. Let's just see. So some potential players. There's potential players everywhere and a lot of old vets. So just going to quickly scroll through these all. But if you guys see anything that I should be targeting, let me know down below in the comments. Okay, we're almost through them all. Looks like a lot of teams made some trades during the offseason. I couldn't actually get all the trades for the Google Suites page, unfortunately. But in this episode is a pre-recorded episode, so you guys know. Connor Hellbuck's available. That's interesting. Okay, so that's who is available. <laughs> okay, so let's start up the season simulation. So... The first NHL season for Kaprizov and Kunin. Hopefully they have a good preseason. We'll take a quick look at how they did during the preseason afterwards. Just because this is their first time in the NHL. And we're starting off the preseason pretty good. 7-2 win and 2-0 win. And then a loss. Gotta send out the scout. Let's send him out to the WHL. I like scouting in Canada mostly. So... We are 3-1 and one in the preseason, make that 4-1. and one. Hopefully this continues in the regular season and in our last preseason game up against the Winnipeg Jets. Is a loss. So we're 4-2. and two. 
And let's just see who led us in the preseason. Hopefully it's Luke Kunin. It's Zach Prize. Okay. Prize had six points in six games. Just want to quickly check Kunin and um, Kaprizov. So Kaprizov actually was good on that fourth line. Three goals, one assist, four points in six games. So, yeah, I think he is ready even though, even if he's a fourth liner, he's still ready. So hopefully he has a good growth during the season. Um, hopefully he grows to like an 80-something and then he's... Then we could probably get rid of Zucker because I think I have him on a one-year deal. So, um, yeah, that's that. Where is Kunin? Oh, Kunin's up here. Five points in six games. Nice. So we had some good uh, pit players or young players playing good. So hopefully that continues in the actual season. I know usually it doesn't, but you never know with NHL 18 being new. So let's go all the way up to December 1st and then we will check the player stats and then we'll sim all the way up to the deadline check the player stats check the trading block all that sort of stuff so yeah that should be December 1st I think if not it might be January 1st but whatever okay so we are 3 and 1 oh, 3 oh, and 1 so far in the season so yeah our team looks like a lot better so far than last season I think last season we stumbled out of the gate. I don't remember for sure though. Let's see a game against Calgary. It's another win. Yeah, this team is playing great. 6 one Should be pretty automatic because I think our roster is pretty deep. Hopefully everybody likes their ice time though. And we already have an injury. <laughs> Just what we don't need. So Jason Zucker has been injured, which means it gives Kaprizov now third line time. Um, his estimated return is November 19th, so that's actually a long time injury. So Kaprizov is a 75. I guess it's just because of the preseason he was up to a 76, but he could play on the third line now. And I guess we will bring in Landon Ferraro. And we will switch Ferraro with Jaskin since Jaskin's actually a left winger. And we're still winning some games and getting points, so that injury's not hurting us too bad. 8 1 and 3. There's their second regulation loss. And another one back to back. Shutout losses. Got to send out the scout again. Let's go to the WHL and sort uh, scout by three weeks instead of six weeks because that way we can get more uh, prospects scouted because scouting is more important in this game. You can't just scout like every single spot or position, I should say, more. Um, so, yeah, our team's playing good so far, and Kyle Riley's been injured in the minors. With his string hamstring, let's just go replace for now. And Zucker is back. That's good news. Kaprizov grew to the 76 now, so he is actually growing. So Jask can go back over to the right wing spot. Ferraro get replaced by Jason Zucker. And there you go. But yeah, I think we get rid of Zucker during the next off season. So here we go. We got a trade offer. So. Detroit's fourth for our fourth, Lang in his seventh. That's not that bad, but we basically move up in the draft probably. And we give up a prospect that we're not really using even. Um, I'm not going to accept this yet, but probably it's the type of trade I would make. Because if our team plays good, I don't really want to make much moves. So Kyle O'Reilly's already back for the AHL club. So Gilmore, thank you for playing for that tiny bit. Let's see. There you go. Okay, so Lundestrom is growing still. He's up to a 62 now, 19 years of age, or age now. His defense is getting better. His strength is getting better. So I'm liking this guy. He might be a really good bottom six kind of guy for us. Maybe even better than that. You never know. Oh, and that was... Oh, wow. Okay, that helps at least Kaprizov's ice time. So Zach Prize has been injured with post-concussion syndrome. So the old guy going down with a concussion... His estimated return is February the 28th. So he's out for like three months. So Jason Zucker, you're going to play some second line time, I guess. And then Kaprizov is going to get some third line time. He is up to a 77 now, so he's growing a lot. And let's see. Scratch, Ferraro, you could jump in there, I guess. Yeah, Ferraro could jump in. Jaskin could go there. Let's just see... Oh, I don't want Landon Ferraro on the power play, though. Now we could give this to Miko Koivu, I guess. Or we actually could give it to Kaprizov. You know what? We're going to give it to Kaprizov. Kaprizov could play with Kunin on the power play. 
that's a lot of ice time for him, but he is a good prospect. So, and then let's see. Um, who do we want to put in that spot? You know, I'm gonna put. Yeah, I'm gonna put Kaprizov in there. This kid's good. He's a sniper too. He could play in a three-on-three -three situation in overtime. He's got good defensive stats, so why not? Yeah, we are 13-7 in three so far. So let's send out a scout again. You know, actually, let's go a month at a time in places because I don't want to keep on seeing that notification necessarily. Or you guys probably don't. So one month. Okay, so we're nearly up at December 1st. At least we're playing better than last year, so I think that's, that's on December 1st. I don't know, it was December 1st, so I guess we're going up to January 1st, but whatever. Our team's on a three-game winning streak, but it ended by the LA Kings. We're still not having the greatest simulation, but it doesn't really matter. Because, kind of, I don't know if it's still the same like in NHL 17 where you simulate good. Uh, you have a bad playoffs or whatnot, so... And our AHL team's not playing the greatest, 16, 15, and 5. So they're having an off year in comparison to last year's playoff success where they went to the conference finals. Scouting again. Let's see. Let's go to Russia. Find uh, Kaprizov, another friend or something from the KHL. Even though the KHL's not in this game. And now we're getting offered Thomas Tatar in a fourth for our first and a third that's not bad because Tatar is how old. But I don't want a left winger. This is basically they're offering us this because we lost Parise to injury. He's only 28. Yeah, he's basically better than Parise is. But I don't want to move, make that move and then Parise comes back. And then I have to put like Caprice off as a scratched player or something like that. Okay, so we're up here at January 1st and our record is 20, 14, and 6. So basically 20 and 20. That should be good enough for a playoff spot, I think. Hopefully. Yeah, we are currently in the last wildcard spot by only behind three by three points behind the Dallas Stairs and the Colorado Avalanche and only four points behind the first place National Predators. Okay. So let's take a look at our player stats. Wow. <laughs> Graylin, 31 and 40. That's good. Let's take a look at the standings first so far. Um, let's just take a look at our team stats kind of. So, goals four per game average. Where are we? Um, hmm. I didn't see us yet, did I? Oh, wow. We are near the bottom. We're not scoring a lot in goals. Huh. But we're still getting wins. But it's because we're letting in less goals against, I think. Yeah, we're a pretty good defensive team. That's nice. 2.42 goals against per game. Our power play has... Is it good? No, it's not really that good. Maybe it's because Kunin's on there. I don't know. Maybe I should put Kunin on the wing or something. And then put Miko Koivu back in there or something. Um, power Penalty kill looks really good. Yeah, penalty kill is the second best in the league. So our penalty kill is what's um, getting us this far, I guess. Our home record's not good 9, 8, and 2. But we're good on the road 11, 6, and 4. And we're 3, 5, and 2 in our last 10. So we haven't had a good last 10. Hopefully we pick it up because we want to make the playoffs obviously this year. Or if not, we could go back into a rebuilding shell. But let's see. So, okay, so that's all those guys. Kuhn in uh, 20 points in 40 games. Nice. 21 years of age now. Kaprizov's got 19 points and he's up to a 79. So he is growing like crazy. He's probably going to be pretty good by next season. So I think for sure... Jason Zucker is going to go yeah, next season. Look at that. 8 points in 32 games. I think he's listed as a second line forward as well. We only have him on a one year deal. So I think he does go during this off season. Um, just so we could have Kaprizov up to the, like the second or third line. And then we might have to trade away Parise. Even though that's unrealistic. Because he has a new movement clause in real life. Gold handing. Oh wow. Hutchinson has been good as a backup. Glad I signed him. 5-1-1 one, one in 8 games. He's got a 927 save percentage. Not a great goals against, but it's not that bad. Okay. Let's just check the AHL. Yeah, let's check the AHL for points. So Greenway's leading the way. 34 points in 39 games. He's up to a 76. And listed as a depth forward. So 
he's going to be in the NHL probably next season as well. So we have to free up some roster spots during the offseason. Um, Lucia is 75. I don't think he'd be growing. Ludenstrom, 15 points in his first 39 games in the minors. And he's up to a 63. Like an he could be NHL bound in like two or three seasons if he continues to grow like that, I think. So, yeah, that's that. Let's go back to simulating, I guess. Yeah, let's go back to simulating up to the deadline. Because then we'll check out the, like, final player stats for that. So, yeah, let's... Hmm. Yeah, I think, yeah, let's just go back to simulating. Okay, so go all the way up to the trade deadline, which is on February 27th. Wow, okay. That's, usually it's always in March, but I guess it's in the end of February this year. Wow, nice 5 nothing win over the Isles. But they're probably still in the rebuilding stage, considering they traded away so much players during last year. How did we lose to Vegas, though? <laughs> I wonder if Vegas has any good players that they got in like the off season. Let's scout in Sweden for three weeks. There you go, some nice wins again. We seem to be playing really good defensively in games too. Like I was saying with the standings, because yeah, we barely did in any goals so far in our wins this month, like two or one goals. Let's see, so our, yeah, we're definitely playing good enough to make the playoffs this year, so we are going to be maybe a contender this year, you never know. So McNabb, we're getting offered, and a fourth from Vegas for a second. That's a nice one to get, but I don't want to screw up morale on the defensive core, and we've been playing good enough without that trade, so we're just going to leave it. I don't even know if we have to make any trades at the deadline this year. We might still, just to help us with a playoff run or something. Because we got to get Miko Koivu maybe one Stanley Cup before he retires. I don't know if he's going to retire this year or what. Hopefully players are liking their ice. And you know what? I should check that first. Well, I'll check that actually when we get to the deadline. And oh, wow. Okay, that's horrible. Devin Dubnik has been injured till February the 14th. So that's not that long time. It's like a week or so, I think. But he's been injured with a hamstring injury. So we got to call up. Who does not go through waivers? I don't want to call up somebody that goes through waivers. Oh, Nick Spedberg does, but he's the best available. You know what? I'm going to call up Spedberg. I don't think any team's going to claim him. At least I hope not. If they do, it doesn't matter. Those two could play down there that we have in the minors. So, Spedberg, you are going to be playing. Yeah, you're going to be playing as backup behind Michael Hutchinson. Hopefully, Hutchinson could play good as a starter. He is a bit of a fringe starter, so it's not that bad. And then in the minors, we are going to put in Steve McCulloch. Okay, that doesn't look that bad. Our goaltending core in the NHL looks kind of bad, but whatever. So let's continue to go up to the trade deadline. Dubnik should be back soon. And of course, I do not want to claim somebody like Brooks Orpik, who's on a one-year deal. Nick Cronwall, no thank you. Detroit just wants to get rid of all those old guys still. And Devin Dubnik is back, so that is good news. It means we could send down the goalie back. So I'm just going to quickly do that, and I'll see you guys in a sec. Okay, guys, so Svedberg is back in the minors. He didn't go through waivers, and the weird thing is he dropped a lot because I think since we sent him down. Is that why? Let's see. Wow, just because he got sent down, he dropped from a 77 to a 74. Damn. Okay, so maybe next time we do not call up Svedberg, but whatever. So, Dubnik should be recovering from his injury. Zach Mitchell's been injured in the minors. Just replace him. Josh Bailey, is it? Or Justin Bailey that we're getting offered? I think that's Josh Bailey. He's old though, right? Or 28 at least. Yeah, I think that's Josh Bailey, not Justin Bailey yet. Josh Bailey, no thank you. See, they're offering us left wingers just because of Parise's injury, I think. Cal O'Reilly's been injured, so the AHL is getting hit with injuries hard, and that's probably why they're not making the playoffs, because they're 21, 28, and 9 currently. Come on, guys, let's go on a little winning streak here before the deadline, and 
I guess we have, oh, Zach Parise is back from his injury. I almost forgot about that. Right before the trade deadline, he comes back. And Caprice is up to an 80 now. Oh, okay, so... Let's see, what could we do here? Hmm. Yeah, I think we have to move... Zucker, maybe, I don't even know, maybe even this, like, uh... Maybe at this uh, deadline we trade away him. Because Caprice will have his third line scoring for it, but he actually is on the power pl or penalty kill, so he might not complain about his ice time. I just don't want him to drop in overall, being one of our top prospects. So, who was it? Cal O'Reilly. Even though you're old, you are still pretty solid, so put you back there. We've lost three straight games in the extra frame. Multiple players on Iowa are back. Who else was injured? I can't even remember. Oh yeah, I remember now. So, wow, Greenway's up to a 77. Damn. So, I think... Who was here? Zach Mitchell is there for sure. I think that was it almost. Yeah, that probably was almost it. No, maybe Sealer was scratched too. No, maybe not. Okay, I th I'll just leave it like that. Boom. Okay, so... Yeah, our record's looking pretty solid still. We're just above 500 in a way with all those overtime losses, but... We're looking a lot better than last year. And let's scout the United States for three weeks. Okay, so our last game right before the trade deadline... Wow, okay, that's a crazy offer, but James Neal on a five-year deal... No, I don't like that at all. I'm just going to edit my trading block for a second, just right before the deadline if I can. And instead of putting this first on, we're going to put Jason Zucker on, because I think I want to maybe move him this year, or we just let him go during the off season because he's got a solid amount of trade value. And I want Kaprizov to have a roster spot, so we didn't get any trade offers right before the deadline. But we still might be able to move him, so just so you guys know, he's available on the trading block so if you guys think if there's any possible trades we could do with him let me know uh let's see so hmm let's go to points again and check who was leading us in points and then we'll check the trading block and then that will be it for this episode so let's sort by certain positions i guess so centers granlin 42 points Kuhn in 38 points in 63 games, so he might actually win Rookie of the Year if he keeps it up. I don't know if there's a better rookie there might be. Uh, Coyle also 38 points, so as you can see, that's why I have Coyle still on the third line. Actually, he, how's his morale? His morale... Yeah, he's liking his ice time. That's good news. How about Erickson Eck? Is he liking his ice time? Hmm. He didn't like it, and then he liked it. Hmm, that's interesting. 27 points for him. Koivu's only got 13 points on that second line. I think it could be because we don't have him on the power play. But we have him on the penalty kill, so... Didn't I send him only to a one-year deal? Yeah, I think he might have to go during this offseason if he does not retire. You know he is a guy that you want to have retire with the team, kind of. Um, Eric Stahl, 44 points. Capri Sal, 33 points. Really nice. 15 goals, 18 assists. Jaskin, 19 points, solid. Sizuker doesn't perform really that well either. 16 points. Prize, 13 points in his 26 games before his injury. Right wingers, Nita Ryder, 44 points in 63 games. Ennis, 18 in 63. Ferraro, 5 in 45. Defensively, Suter, 34 and 63. 23 in 63 for Dumba. 18 in 63 for Brodeen. He looks like he's growing a bit. I think Spurgeon, 18 points only as well. Uh, Murphy, 7 points. And Riley, 4 points. Goaltending, Dubnik, 24, 17, and 9. 3 shots, 924 save percentage, and a 2.25. Really good. And wow, Hutchison has just been amazing as a backup. 10, 1, and 1 with a 927 and a 2.18 goals against average. So, really happy with the signing. How long did we sign him for? 1 year only. We might have to bring him back for the next year after that too. And Spedberg was 1-1 one one when he played up here in the NHL. 
with actually a really good save percentage in goals against. Okay, so that is that. Let's take a look at the run the league quickly as well, maybe. Just for each um, thing. So, gold hitting, it looks like Wild Gibson might win another Vesna. So, that's gold leaders, defensively leaders in points. Burns and Carlson are right up there. Same with Yossi. Um, forwards. John Tavares, see, that's why I wanted to trade for him. He's with the Dallas Stars now. Okay. How about rookies? I want to just check if Kunin's leading rookies. No, he's not. Oh, maybe he's not even considered a rookie. Where is he? Maybe just, I, I made him, but it's not considering him a rookie? Wow, that's weird. Because he should be considered as a rookie, because this is his first season in the NHL. But look, Colin White's the only one that's up there, so I don't understand that, but whatever. And, yeah, so that is that. Let's just quickly check the trading block. And then I'll be it for this episode, because it is running a bit long, I think. Okay, so trade block. So if you guys see anything that you like, let me know, because we do have to probably trade away Jason Zucker. So there's potential prospects again. Is Bob Zadina's on the trading block? It's pretty crazy. There's a lot of veteran kind of guys too. People that might be able to help with like a playoff run if we decide to go for one, which we probably will be. And we're almost at the end. And there you go. So if you guys seen anything available, let me know down below in the comments what we should do in regards to Jason Zucker. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys next time.